everybody and welcome to Food Health and Fitness. My name is Roddy and today we're going to show you how to release your gluteals. We are going to go through three techniques, vibration inhibition, pin and stretch or self myofascial release after a neural inhibition from the pressure, and then finally a PNF stretch or proprioceptive neuromuscular stretching of the hip. We are going to need, again, your Booster Pro 3 vibration gun. I got two settings or attachments, the big round one that's soft and the small round flat hard attachment. You're going to need all those. We have a five inch foam core ball. This is our fluid bowl. And you also will need a dowel or a broom. We'll uh, work in a pinch. So first things first, we want to show you how to inhibit the glute. Remember the glute is probably the thickest muscle in the body or the thickest muscle of your body. And we are going to go through and relax the whole thing. It lays on the posterior compartment, attaches from the pelvis and the sacrum on the back side of the body. It comes down like a teardrop bifurcates or splits into two heads where you're going to attach to the femur and then to the IT band. So we're going to canvas the entire area superficially with the gun. And we're going to target the trigger points or fascial adhesions with the smaller round head and we're going to go in and stretch it out. So first things first, when you just lay sideline, you're going to do the right side and the back side. Set your gun up to a level three or four and I'm going to grab it at the butt end of the Y. I want to start over at the sacral base here. I'm going to trace the pelvis on the posterior line of the pelvis, the spine of the pelvis, and then start doing horizontal strokes as you're mowing the lawn from inside out. Once again, what you're trying to do is pre inhibit the muscle and look for either odd irregularity of tissue, maybe back of bundles. A lot of times you'll find that back here at the posterior edge, posterior edge, and your edge of the posterior or tender points or trigger points, which you normally find closer to the stage line. So closer to the point. Now again, there's a lot of tissue to get through, so we do this over about a minute's time, looking for those sensitive points. Then we would shut the gun off after a minute and target the sensitive points and or the adhesions. And once again, pick one. Isolate the tension of the gun. I'm going to level two. Lower vibration, a little bit more pressure, of force into the tissue, a little bit more amplitude, depth. But again, not to provoke pain. The intent again is to trigger that GTO reflex inhibition. Basically means that the tendon is going to be stretched by the clenching of the muscle through the vibration. The tendon then overwhelms the muscle activity and shuts it off. So it's again trying to inhibit the tissue, it'll stop clenching, sometimes it'll ricochet if it's too much. It'll start to relax and feel less sensitive, it'll start to soften, and then it'll feel warm. Once again, once you get to that point, up to 15 seconds, and then you can move on to another spot. And you can do up to three to four spots, or a total of about five minutes of time under tension, no greater than that. We don't want to provoke tendonitis. So again, once you're done with that, we would go into this pin and stretch technique, which would be more of a self myofascial release. So I'm gonna use that ball, I'm gonna put it under the gluteal. It's very important that we brace the opposite side by putting our weight down on the opposite heel and crunching to the other side to stabilize our hip. Now from there, you can rotate up and down, get through the full girth of that muscle. And again, what we're looking for are sensitive points, or again, irregular densities of tissue, and then we're going to shorten the muscle by laterally rotating it and extending the leg a little bit so that it's soft and disengaged. The intent is not to provoke pain, but to put pressure into the tissue until it tensions it. Once again, pulls on the receptors within that musculotendinous junction. Those receptors feel that pressure, open up the mechanically gated ion receptors. Sodium floods the cell. The cell then sees it as, again, a protection mechanism by way of the spine. Again, you get an action potential that relaxes the stretch reflex and the motor response to the extrapuchal fibers, so the muscles soften, so the ball will sink. Once we feel that sinking, then we want to move through the tissue. That pressure has relaxed. It's now softened. Now I can move this leg contrary to the muscle action, which is internal rotation and flexion, until I get to the first barrier for stretch. It's spongy, not taut and it's soft and not painful. Once you get there, the ball will sink again deep into the tissue. You feel that inhibition neurally, move through the tissue and move it to the next barrier for stretch. Again, respecting the fact that you're not dissociating the joint by flexing the hip under, making the back flex, 
making sure that again, you don't provoke pain. And again, making sure you don't feel that paresthesia or numbness down the back of the leg. So you would do that again for roughly about a minute, minute and a half, or about two to three cycles of that stretch, relax, push them deeper, stretch, relax, push them deeper, and then you can move into the stretch. For today, we're gonna to show you how to do a side line external rotation with a PNF, so it's a strain counter strain method. We're gonna lay on our left side to get to the right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pole, I'm draping it across the outer lateral edge of my quad, and then I'm hooking my leg around the pole. Now again, what you can do is prop it up with the foam roller between your legs. So if you don't have the, uh, the stability there, use a foam roller and kind of prop it there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this leg up into flexion, pull it up into flexion, and then rotate it ex internally. So notice how I'm rotating the, the, the face of my quad towards the middle of my body. So my patella is pivoting internally. So I'm using the pole to act as a lever to rotate the tibia outward and the femur inward till I get to that first spongy barrier. Remember that the glute max is both an extensor and external rotator. So I'm gonna get this max and the deep five lateral rotators, right, at the same time, into this nice pin and stretch technique. Or not pin and stretch, excuse me the PNF stretch. So what I'm doing is I'm just bringing it actively by way of the pole and my force of my arm, pushing it internally, holding it there without pain. About 10 seconds into it, then 10 in again, we'll feel that stretch, it'll relax even further. And then I can actively pull my leg in by flexing my groin and my hip flexor and see if I can assist that passive into more active. Now from that range of motion, I'm going to extend the leg back and rotate it externally. So I'm flexing my butt by pulling the toe inward, rotating the femur outward, pushing against the pole and extending it. So this is the strain method. So again, I'm flexing the same muscle I'm trying to relax. Again, that pressure on the tendon is gonna again provoke that GTO reflex. That's what we're trying to get after. And then relax, bring it up actively into flexion. And then again, see if you can get it more internal range of motion. So again, I'm actively pulling it into that next stage. Now again, I'm gonna wait there, wait for it to relax, no pain, and then see if I can go a little bit further into internal rotation. And again, you can do multiple segments of that. Our goal again is to restore the hip flexion and internal rotation. It'll again, reduce that lateral force on the femur and get you more mobility out of the backside of the hip. So again, we did a PNF at the end. Before that, we did a pin and stretch with the ball. And then in the beginning, we started with the vibration inhibition to relax the nervous system so that the next two segments that we just showcased were more efficient. So any questions on any of it, reach out, admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. There's your glute bags.